Uh, it, it's a very, very positive book. Uh, with, with yeah, it's doing. A, it seems to be doing a lot of good for a lot of people and getting a lot of good reviews, and I'm happy. You should be. You should be very, very proud. Actually, you know what? Why? I, you know, I, I think it's good to freeform things. And uh, but uh, what, one of the questions that I had was, um, you you worked on this. You had with uh, it says with John Nelson. Was he the editor? What was what was the creative process? How did how did uh, how did the book happen? Uh, yes, he was my editor. All the words, uh, every word in the book is mine. Okay. Um, I contractually did not have to give him credit, but um, energetically I felt uh, that his guidance as far as the layout of the book, the structure of the book, yep. and uh, the focus of the book was so vitally important that I was compelled to include him in well, it's very, it's very the sweet. credits and the royalties. Well, it's very, it's very sweet of you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can tell just by reading the book that the language is yours. Um, it's, uh, you know, it certainly has a very uh, uh, unique style. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, anyway, that's, that's very, it's very sweet of you to, to give him such prominent credit and uh, you know, right on the cover. So... That's uh, yeah. That's very, very, very sweet. Um, yeah. How, how are you doing today? What's uh, what's going on? You're you're just um, uh, in the LA area. Eight one eight is at the Valley. Where 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 are you? Uh... Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm in Woodland Hills in the Valley. There you go. Okay. And um, I've already done three private sessions for, uh, across different parts of the world. Wow. And uh, <laughs> read a script for an acting role that was sent to me. Wow. And um, written a blog. And <laughs> it's busy, been a busy, busy day busy, already. Busy, busy day. And then, wait, in the private sessions. So is this? Because um, I, I saw on your website you've got these healing sessions. Is that uh, uh, what you're referring to? Uh, yes, I I have, as you know, two global radio shows on internet shows, yep. and I also do private uh, hour healing sessions or half hour sessions. Uh, all over the world, helping people get the truthfulness and clarity around uh, the beliefs and perceptions that are blocking their own energy from creating the very power that they want in their lives. Yep, yep. Uh, so you know, we have to create ourselves if if we're going to create our life. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so... It's based. Uh, you're using a lot the the I am principle. Can you? Uh, yeah, I'm aware of the principle. Can you? Can you explain what what that means? Uh, I know you've got a little piece in the appendix of the book that talks about it. Um, well, basically, uh, basically the I am principle is literally you must claim and direct the energy of creation that you are. Mm -hmm. for the energy to respond and create for you. That's the clearest... Wow, I don't think I've ever said it that clearly before. Well, that's that's, that's so, concise. So your I Am Presence literally is the creative force of the universe. And it must be directed by your conscious choice. I see. I see. Uh, if you do not create yourself, you become the created upon. And you create yourself by the choice of perceptions mm -hmm. that you choose to hold about yourself. Sure, sure. Well, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about perceptions. Uh, it seems like uh, a big part of the book is, uh, is, is, is about how, how, how difficult we can be on ourselves and how often um, you felt, you were saying you felt unworthy of, uh, of your success. And uh, yes. and how to how to deal with that? How what to do? You, you mentioned there was one one point in the book where uh, you were, you you mentioned after you started your your career started taking off in L.A. how you were being taken out to all these fancy restaurants and and it all felt very surreal that you felt as though you didn't belong necessarily. Um, uh, could you yeah and and can you maybe explain what 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 should people do to to be able to. Um, to accept, I guess, success when it comes and be able to be grateful and, you know, and know how to celebrate it as well. 
Well, I I think the first thing is we cannot, well, let me put this in a more positive way. We must move beyond the limitations of family and society and teachers that most of us are inundated with from conception on. Mm-hmm. And uh, most of those messages are incredibly limiting messages instead of empowering Absolutely. messages. Well, you, you mentioned and, a, lot, a lot about your, and, your, your, your Christian uh, upbringing that was very, uh, who, who was it? Was it, the, I think, uh, your grandma Bo, uh, was it, to, who, who, you know, who, who was the one in the car that told you not that to? That was my aunt. That was your yeah. aunt, okay, okay. But, you know, bottom line, everybody in my family loved me very much. And I think that's the enigma that we have to move through to move back into our own empowerment, Mm -hmm. is that the people that taught us these limiting, disempowering uh, beliefs about creation Mm -hmm. were people who loved us and thought they were teaching us correctly, but they were taught incorrectly. It wasn't wasn't malicious. The sins of the fathers then just yeah. get passed down through the guise of love and support, sure. and that's very confusing for all of us. Yep, absolutely. Um, so then we have to go, okay, I know I love them, and I honor them, hmm. and they're special in my life, and they didn't know, yep. and I have to create my own knowing now and empower myself to be the creation process that I am. Yeah, no, no, that 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 makes a lot of sense. And you you talk about the importance of family and how you looked forward to uh, spending Christmas uh, with your family and how family was always a big part of for you, for you of, of your grounding. Um, so yeah, yeah, no, it sounds it sounds like uh, even even that moment in the in the car, as you say, it was uh, uh, with your aunt. Uh, there there was nothing malicious there. It's just people that are have, have engraved these these old old habits that, uh, yeah, they're, they're misguided. Uh, but uh, Well, yes, and a lot of it's based in organized religion. Sure. And a lot of it's based, you know, the politics of society and religion have been confused and mixed from the beginning of time. Yep, yep. And uh, I, I tell the people um, who follow my work, that the truth never comes through fear. It never comes through limitation. It always comes through divine love, empowerment, and, you know, power versus force. The true power is the power of divine love. Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Christ, Buddha, they were all examples of really powerful energy through love. Yep. But they certainly were not limited no. in any way, no. right? Yep. So they were a powerful force in our world, and oftentimes uh, we are we are made to be in fear of that power because we misunderstand it as force, and force does not come through divine love. Force comes through fear. I'm going to force you to believe how I believe because I'm in fear that if you don't believe the way I do, you will destroy me. And that's why we go to war, and that's why, you know, we have the the divide in politics that we do, and that's why, you know, all religions come forward and say, well, we're divine love, but you better bloody think the way that we think. (laughs) Right? Yeah. And we need to move into more unlimited thought and possibility mm-hmm. that there is just simply energy to be directed, and we choose to direct that energy in love so that we can all just live in whatever illusion we want to create. Hmm. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. Uh, I'll buy that completely. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so the book... It's a uh, first of all, I think it's something that that's a must read for any actor, um, and, and and I think it, uh, it it has a message for everyone. Like I said, it's a very positive book for for anyone. But but for example, actors, you know, you, you describe. I mean, it's very much of uh, an autobiographical book on how uh, 
how how tough it is to to have that that ride where you you know you could get something successful but then the next you know right after that you're always looking for the next project the next thing and yes but isn't that true about anything we want to create sure that sure. applies you life, see, that's life, what the life, book living, is about is not knowing right to some extent well the book is a metaphor for creation mm-hmm. and and so if if we are not in continual creation of who we are then that creation falls out and what happened to me uh, happens to everybody mm-hmm. that we are creating ourselves with a vision with an intention with power, with passion, and then somebody or something or ourselves sure. sabotages that, yep. and we go, okay, I guess I don't have the power. I'll stop creating me, and I stop creating me because of them or it or this belief. And as soon as you give your power away to anything else and stop creating yourself and keep creating yourself, then the creation of you stops, and it appears that it's because of something outside of yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but it's always because you've stopped creating. It's always because you've stopped creating. So then, yeah, yeah, because you said you're saying that uh, a lot of it. Uh, so, but but, that, but that's I mean that's that's a very um, it's a, it's a bit of a solipsistic um, point of view, right? The idea that. Uh, that our mind creates everything around us. What what about? I mean, there there still are interactions from with other people's minds and other people's energies, right? Um, well, yes, but your perception of you that you hold defines sure. how you see those interactions with other people, how you see the other people, how you see the world that the people live in. Mm-hmm. It all comes from the perception that you hold about yourself. For example, I just did an episode of The Office. Uh-huh. Yeah, congratulations. And yeah, 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 thank that, you. That's, that's yes, cool. it was great fun. And it was a great test of exactly everything that I teach. Because what happened was, you know, I kept getting, and I think I'm a pretty funny person, <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, I but I kept are. getting, you know, D, not so much. Don't make it so big. No, we don't like that. Can you make another choice? And I very quickly started going into, again, a deeper, more expanded level of I'm not worthy, right? So I kept uh, finding myself having the thoughts, oh, my God, they don't like me. Mm. Oh, my God, I'm not so funny. Oh, wow, I wish, you know, maybe I've lost it. Maybe I can't act anymore, right? And at some point, I said, stop it. This is all an illusion. These thoughts are all a bloody illusion of what you're creating, D. Get your power back from the illusion of these thoughts. Hmm. Yeah. No. So I stopped in that moment and I said, no, I'm loved. I'm talented. I'm received. I'm going to choose to see the world and everybody on this set through that perspective, and in a day and a half, people were kind of, oh, my God, that was great. Oh, we love what you're doing. Oh, that, and nothing changed. Nice. Nothing changed yep. except my choice of the perception that I was receiving this through yep. so that I could alter and shift yep. my choice of how I was seeing everything. And if we could just be that objective, in all the moments of our life and go, no, I'm not going to create this illusion. I'm going to create this illusion. Yep. It shifts that quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 an ongoing, uh, it's an ongoing process. Absolutely. It's ongoing until, you know, your expansion has expanded as far as it wants to expand, which, according to my information, is never Yep. Somebody called into one of my shows and said, how will I know when I'm there, D? And the answer was, you'll know when you're there, when you know there's no there to get to. Yep. That's it's very, just very a zen. continual yeah. playing and creation of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, I, I'll buy that. I'll buy that completely. I, I, that that makes that makes sense to me. Also, you you, you mentioned that um, um, Charles Conrad uh, was uh, basically a, a sort of uh, guru. Oh, he was my mentor. And, Absolutely. And I quote: "There's there. It says here in page twenty six, consciousness became acting, and acting became consciousness." Um, acting was born consciously in Charles Conrad's class as a spiritual path for me. And you keep describing in the book how how he would he always wanted you not to overanalyze things and to let yourself be in the moment. Um, yes. And and know how to how to get it in tune with your energy, control your energy. It was all about energy. Everything everything was about energy. Well, and everything is. That's all there is. <laughs> Science, religion, and spirituality will all say there's nothing but energy. Yeah. And we're all one energy. Yeah. So we're all interacting in this big illusion depending on whatever perception we want. And what Charles was teaching mm -hmm. was literally how to return to the naivete of sheer creation. That when you go into your mental mind, you literally stop yep. creating. You have to go back. You have to go back to your knowing, and your mind is used to doubt and question. Hmm. So if you really want to know, you've got to go into your consciousness, mm -hmm. which is like a little kid going, okay, I know what I want for Christmas. I want this toy, and I'm going to tell the people, a.k.a. the universe, what I want, and I'm going to know that they hear me, and I know that when I get up on Christmas, Santa's going to be there, whoops, here's Christmas, the toy's here. Yep. Now, if we can create that simply with that naivete, we would create more miraculously in every moment. It's interesting. I mean, certainly your book, uh, uh, it, it very much, it corresponds to you when when, when you were... The, at your most naive moments, that's when things would really come together for you. Um, yep, and, and still do. Yeah, um, whereas people who get become cynical, right, they start to uh, uh, create their own barriers, as uh, as you point out. Uh, well, what 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 can people do to uh, to reclaim that? Uh, I guess that that innocence and you know that yeah. How, 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 what what would you yeah what what uh, what pragmatic uh, advice would you would you give? I mean, the book. Well, you you have to start with loving yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, because if if you don't love yourself unconditionally, yep. which we're never taught to do, by the way. I see. Uh -huh. uh, it, you have to love yourself unconditionally before what, you can move mean, into. What does it mean? What does it mean to to love yourself unconditionally? What 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 what, what does that what, what does that mean? Does that uh, uh, yeah? Can you can you explain that to me? Does that mean? That well, that means to move out of judgment. Without judgment, right? yep. Okay, you have to move out of judgment. You have to move into total acceptance and love of yourself, mm -hmm. the way you are, knowing that there's nothing right or wrong. There's no polarities. There's no good or bad, better or worse. There simply is the energy that you've created and in this moment right now, that's history that you don't have to address for another moment in your life. You can literally say, okay, in this moment, I'm directing and choosing an entirely different perspective about everything. Yep. I know that I create, and I create it any way I want to create it, so I don't have to create the failed marriage the lack of money, the disease, the feeling that I'm not good enough ever again. Mm -hmm. What do I want to create? I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. I'm awesome, I'm magnificent, I'm I incredible, I am creation itself. And that's where I'm going to start in this moment. I'm getting my power back to know that I am the power of the creation. Yeah. Well, let me right? Let me let me let me ask you. So also, you don't have to fix anything. You just have to choose to shift your perspective. Loving yourself without judgment and self acceptance. Yeah, no, those those are definitely uh, those are cornerstones. And I, uh, yeah, every, you know, th certainly that's that's definitely the first step. Uh, you know, you mentioned your uh, 
your your your, your late husband uh, Chris, um, and uh, and how he was so balanced, and and he apparently had, had you mentioned uh, an an aneurysm that almost killed him, and he had an out of body experience you mentioned in the book, and then yes. and afterwards, mm-hmm. he he seemed to be very balanced. He was ready. He wasn't afraid of dying, and he lived life in a very very interesting. Uh, almost, uh, um, well, very enlightened uh, point of view. He even mentioned to you one time you read a really positive review, and uh, and and he said, "Hey, if you you know if you start if you start believing what they say, you have to take the good with the bad, right?" And uh, yeah, basically, if you believe the good ones, you're going to have to believe the bad ones. Do yep. so believe what you know. And he, he said, "Just listen." What to do yourself. you know? Yeah. Was your performance good? Or not? You're the only one that knows. You're the only one. Well, how he he was so he was so 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 enlightened, so balanced, um, and you, of course, were you know struggling to always to find that balance. Um, today, how how do you are you are you much more balanced today, or do you do you still? Find oh my it? God! Yeah, I I, <laughs> okay. I I choose. That's the perspective and the direction that I live in is to always bring myself back into balance. So I was just um, that, then, yeah. I, 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 I was just tested considerably with the death of my closest friend. I'm sorry to hear that. And it sort, certainly moved into despair and grief yep. for a few days, and then I made the conscious choice to honor her more by regaining my balance, my power, and my knowing of creation as opposed to my victimness of losing her. Right. Well, that's, that's, the, that's the constant struggle, right? Is how, how do we Oh, it's take a challenge, our... yes. Right. That's our challenge. Not to feel like victims and know how to change, shift our perspective. Um, that's, that, is, that is the ultimate challenge. And, 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 and the point is, I guess that's, that's, an, that's a, an, inseparable, an inseparable part of life. Right? You're, you're always going to, we're always going to have things like that, but... But we always have the opportunity, as you say, to to find ways for to bring in creation and positivity into. Yes, uh, you're in choice every minute of your life. You're in choice, and you can bring yourself. You can choose to bring yourself back to the choice mm-hmm. uh, of knowing that you are the creation of your life. So, in every moment, we can choose joy or despair. We can choose to know that we are the creation, or we can choose to believe we're victims. Yep. You know, I mean, uh, I'm sure that all of you heard about the devastation of the tornadoes in uh, Joplin, Missouri, that we had over here. Yep. In, in any kind of of severe, uh, any of the tsunamis, the hurricanes, any of that stuff, people will tell you they only have two choices: I give up. Or I create again. Yep, yep. And that's create. really the choice in every moment that we have. I give up, I well, create. Well, let's talk, let's talk about for a sec. Um, um, you mentioned in the book, uh, I found this quite interesting, that Chris and you um, had, uh, were struggling to, to get pregnant, and you, went, uh, you tried lots of different fertility treatments, you, and, and Western medicine really didn't, uh, it wasn't able to, to figure things out. But it was ultimately an acupuncturist, someone named uh, Dao Xing Ni, that helped you mm-hmm. get pregnant. Uh, is that is that right? Yes. And uh, you know, it was a journey. Uh, part of that journey was I had to have so many many people tell me I can't, mm-hmm. that I couldn't. Yep. That I came forward and said, "Oh yes, I can." And and I think that's the point that was the turning point. Because as soon as I said, oh, yes, I can, and I will, yep. and I made the decision, yep. then I found Dao Xing, yep. and he and I together, because I had decided I was going to create that, yep. brought the possibility forward so that I could get pregnant. That makes sense. But you see, I had to decide first. Yep. Otherwise, I don't create the doctor who can create it for me. I see. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not open. You don't find that path. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That 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 makes sense. Um, it all comes back to it's really about us. It's all about us. 
you know, it's the line from the end of The Wizard of Oz, you had the power all along, Dorothy. Yep, absolutely. But until we know that we have the power, we do not often create uh, the people, the circumstances, the opportunities to complete the power. Yep, yep. So how, tell me, tell me more about how did you, um, how did you transition into being a, a, a spiritual teacher? How, uh, yeah, how did that, how did that come about? Obviously you've had so many life lessons and you, you, you became much more enlightened along the way. How did, yeah, how did it come about that you, you decided to, uh, yeah. You know, um, I just got down so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was in such despair, such anger, such grief about, um, you know, my father's suicide, being hurt in the business, yep. uh, the loss of my husband, that I I is literally that, this just is, this dropped is you, to my is, knees. This is what you describe as the zero point in the book, right? Yes, yes. And we all have it. Yep. And it's that place where we just give up. Yep. We give up because we can't fight anymore. Yep. And that's, that is the point. When you hit the zero point, you either create or you give up. Yep. And I, I had to create. I had a daughter that I loved unconditionally, and I had to create again for her. Now I create for myself. Yep. But she was the catalyst at that moment that kept me from totally giving up. Well, and you, you, you're a bit like, uh, like uh, De Niro in Raging Bull, right? Uh, you know, he gets uh, the more... Yeah, right. The the more he gets punched, the stronger he gets gets and comes back. You're a fighter. Um, you know, that that much. Yes, is clear. but I, you know, and I I really want you to include this, please, sure. in the article. That this is this is the message of Bright Light. We do not have to get punched. I see. We do not have to have the disease. I'm going to write that down we, right now. Okay. Yeah, we we do not have to uh, lose the money. We do not have to be hurt in our lives before we decide consciously to create joy and health and uh, yeah. abundance and, and health in our lives. We can just choose to create that. We don't have to yep. hit the zero point. Okay. And That's it's so question. important for our world to know that now. Yep. Don't wait for the tragedy. Start consciously creating what you want now, which is love and peace and joy and health and abundance and enoughness for all. You know? Yep. That's what we all want in this world. Yep. But we have to consciously direct the energy to be creating that. It's tough. I mean, we're, people are so used to taking things for granted, right? Uh, and uh, it, it's... It, it's uh, people, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard for people to, to uh, sometimes to get that. But it's a, obviously it's such a simple uh, and, and good message. It, yeah, the people, we, you know, you don't have to be a victim and you should be able to, you know, think positively and then try and solve things from the get-go. But, I mean, at the same time, so you, you don't think that, that it's, well, again, okay, I mean, this is a very deep philosophical question. Obviously, I'm against uh, people having to suffer, but, but, but surely... Some some um, some difficult experiences in our lives do help us evolve. They are aren't they necessary to some extent? I think that's a belief. You don't think at all? Okay, okay. Fair I enough. think that's a belief, and as you believe, yep. it will be delivered unto you. Okay, so so if you believe that that nothing. If has you to believe you have to suffer to grow, then you will have to suffer to grow. If you believe that you can sit here and feel wonderful and empowered and joyful hmm. and ask for enlightenment and demand enlightenment, it will come. Yes, I believe that. Well, I don't believe that you have to necessarily suffer to grow. Uh, I don't believe that. I, I, and I believe that you have to open yourself up. But, uh, uh, but I do think that, you know, that everything takes work. I think, uh, I think you still, you have to put in, uh, um, well, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're, you are telling people to put in the energy, the positive energy, and that is work, right? Energy is everything. So you can it, look at it as work. I look at it as joy. Yeah. But yeah. that's a different perspective, you see. Yeah, yeah. 
Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so the more free I am, the more joyful I am, the happier I am, the more I love myself and therefore love the world, that's a lot less work than having to... Um, well, what, what do you think would have happened? Um, I'm just, I'm just, you know, do you think if um, if you had read your own book when you uh, right when you moved to LA, uh, would you have listened? Would things have been different? Well, you see, when I moved to LA, I knew what I wrote in the book, and then I lost it. Oh, I see. <laughs> that's why I wrote the book, so people <laughs> don't have to lose it. Oh, and and that's what if you read so many of the comments on Amazon dot com, you know, and and the emails I get, it's like, oh my God, the hmm. I picked up the book to read your story. This is my story. Sure. I remember when I lost my power. I remember who I gave it away to. Now yep. I'm going to get my power back. I'm going to get my joy back. I don't need to let them run my life anymore. And. And that's what I want people to know is whomever no, 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 or whatever took it away, Absolutely. they're not going to give it back to us. Yeah. We're the only ones that can create our freedom from whatever it is. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, going back, I mean, obviously you mentioned, yeah, a lot of really difficult times um, and, and your father's suicide. I mean, um that's still how how yeah what, what I mean what 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 happens I mean does does, does that sometimes come I mean surely when do you think sometimes about 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 your father's suicide does that make you know how how do you handle it I mean that's such a no I really don't and that's the truth I I I don't dwell on it I don't think about it I mean I certainly spent years of course working through it yep. and being affected by it yep um but I. I mean, that's what I mean. Um, I see. We do about you I, I am still even own... affected. I'm still affected by my friend's death that happened sure. about three weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. And have I moved past allowing it to limit me? Yes. Okay. So I, I, I don't use the story of my father's suicide and his alcoholism to limit who I am right now. Well, yeah, it's obvious you're not. You're shining quite brightly now, and, and the book, the book is proof of that. Um, Thank you. It really is. It really is. What? Um, tell me. Um, tell me a little bit about your uh, your habits. I mean, what 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 do you like to? Uh, what type of? What do you like to eat? Are you a vegetarian or uh, or I don't know? Yeah. What would you like to eat, for example? It doesn't matter. I'm, uh, I'm nope. not judging. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I'm I'm from Kansas, so I I like a good piece of meat every once in a while. <laughs> okay. I watch what I mean. I I, I like to eat healthy, yep. so I all my work is based in maintaining the balance of energy. Yep. So you know, I eat protein and vegetables. Uh, I have a drink. I love red wine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's good for me, and so therefore it is. And uh, I don't eat a lot of sugar, but I'll have chocolate because I love it. Sure. Um, I keep just try to keep everything in balance. I don't meditate a lot. I do a very powerful breathing exercise for, for about 15 minutes every morning. But I live consistently, and this is the most important thing people can do right now, mm -hmm. is to direct the masculine, feminine, and child energy to be balanced within them. Sure. When the masculine, feminine, and child energy is balanced, you pretty much remain balanced and in choice about the direction of your life. Uh, that holds you more consistently out of reaction and in creation. So if there's anything I would suggest people do, whether they understand it or not, it doesn't matter. The inner child. Let the, let the No, not the inner child. No, no. no. The balance of masculine, masculine feminine, feminine, and child energy. And child energy. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's, uh, I'll, uh, 
So basically, you know what that is? That's the intuitive, the power, yeah. and the creation all happening at the same time. You mentioned in your book, you, you talk a lot about the uh, the feminine being creation and, and masculine being more the business side or maybe the, uh, uh, is that right? And how, and how it was, well, it was a real Well, it's the power. It's, it's the power of... Of the, uh, that you must put with the intuition to bring the creation forward. Yep. So the masculine can be used uh, as far as maybe the direction, let's say. So you have a, a divine idea come in that says, do you write a book? Oh. Right? Yep. And then you bring the masculine uh, power in and going, all right, Dee, I'm directing all your energy to write this book. Yeah. However you have to do it, write the book. As yeah. soon as that happens, the child, the creation of the book is created. Energetically, it's created. Huh. And then you ha simply have to carry it out. Okay, okay. Um, uh, that's great. Um, what... Uh... Let me see here. Some other other key questions um, that I want. These are great questions, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying to get you know, trying to get right into it. Right. That's 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 what it's all about. Um, let's see here. Okay. Well, you know, and, and, and I and I don't want to. You know, if I'm if I'm pushing too hard, just let me know. But I um, I, I was reading about how in the book you talk about. Uh, E.T., a phenomenal performance, a great, obviously a, a great movie, but then afterwards you, you, you struggled uh, to get, uh, you, you didn't have another studio movie, you said for 15 years, and you mentioned that it was, it was due to po possibly the fact that you weren't willing to have uh, your, your credit in the billing be pulled off, uh, um, where they wanted it only to be Steven Spielberg or something like that, and you, 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 you decided to... to Stick to your uh, to your contractual rights, and that it, yes, it, but I say beyond that, pretty clearly, I think that I created all of that because of all of those limiting beliefs that my aunt turned around and said to me in the car, "Don't go too far, don't go too fast, don't be too mm -hmm. big," mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when he down? came out. When E.T., I, I knew when I did it how big the movie was going to be. Mm -hmm. And Dee Wallace was working with, well, Deanna Bowers from Kansas was working with the biggest director right then of yep. pretty much all time yep. in that moment. And I had to sabotage it some way. Yep. So that's what I mean. When we have limiting beliefs and limiting perceptions, we create the world carrying them out for us, and it appears to be somebody else's doing when it's really our own. Sure, sure. Yeah, so you, so that was you, you, you self sabotage I take responsibility for it all, yes. Okay, okay. Um, and as soon as we don't take responsibility, we give up the power of our creation. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really, really important. I mean, if, if, if people are not willing to totally, and totally is underlined, take responsibility for the creation of their life, then so what, what, it will what, what, be what, what very difficult for them to turn around. What if you're the victim of, uh, of some sort of abuse or something? You know, you, you sh can you take responsibility for that? Um, Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Huh. And you don't have to know how or why, but the re all you have to know is it happened, and that's my story. And I am not going to use that story to limit myself one more minute. Yep. I'm, I'm moving on, and I am creating me as empowered now. In that respect, you take responsibility for creating Yep. You differently. Yep, yep. I I see that. 
What, um, so let's talk about, for a sec, um, about the moment and beingness and, uh, in, uh, in Conrad's class, how, how you would really, you, you let yourself get into this flow, um, where, again, you you had to remove judgment, you had to, uh, let yourself be, so to speak, and, and obviously, this is something that, uh, that, that gave you uh, a very positive lesson for the rest of you, for the rest of uh, your, your life toolkit. How, yeah, how do you, um, um, how do you, how do you make sure that, how do you remain, how do you open up like that? What, uh, you know, what, what, what do people need to do to be able to be open and I guess uh, limit all this, uh, uh, this judgment? The biggest thing is to get out of our heads. We are taught to go to our minds and question everything. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you question, you move into doubt. As soon as you move into doubt, you move out of creation. Yep. Well, let me let me ask you. And again, uh, I, I I ask. Uh, so I, I sometimes I, I ask uh, some uh, uh, provocative questions. So you know, again, if I'm pushing, just let me know. But you, you mentioned um, also overcoming depression. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, um, do, I mean, how do you feel about, uh, uh, antidepressants? What's, what's your take on, uh, on antidepressants? Okay. Well, if I answer this, you have to clearly state that I'm not a doctor because legally I need to state that. Sure. I'm on the, I, I deal with energy and I get very clear messages about energy. Okay. And, and many, many, many of my students and followers are off their antidepressant medication that they were on for years. Yep. Um, my answer to that is when you know that you create your own life, when you know that you are the power of your own life, when you know that you are in control of whether you are the joy and creation of you, what the hell is there to be depressed about? Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree. So I that's part of the, the philosophy. The more baggage, okay, the more limiting baggage that we're holding about ourselves that we choose to let go of, the more judgment of others and ourselves that we choose not to have, the more unconditional love that we choose to live in creates less need for any kind of sure. depressant that we may think we have to have. Okay. So you're, so you're, you're saying, right, that once a person becomes more enlightened and, uh, and accepting, you know, they, they've learned to accept themselves and, and, and remove judgment and, uh, and love themselves, Obviously, the, the need for, for antidepressants will, will become... Is null and void, yeah. Right. Sure. So if you want to say it in a really simple sentence, <laughs> when yes. you live in love for yourself and everybody else, yeah, you ain't going to need any, any depressants. You live in love for... What was that again? For, your, for, for yourself and everybody else. For yourself and There's everybody no else. need for antidepressants because you, you live in love all the time. Yep. And if, it, if that sounds Pollyanna, it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's the answer. See, that's what we have to get. Is it really is that simple. But in the simplicity also comes the choice of responsibility to own it. And that means you have to give up all your stories and all your need to be right and all your victimness and all that shit. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and what, what, from... You, you know, what is there a particular um, spiritual path that you would uh, that you would self describe yourself uh, as uh, as representing? I mean, as you, you obviously, um, you know, we're, we're obviously we're against a lot of uh, a lot of the preconceived notions that hold us back in religion. But you mentioned several times Buddhism in the book and uh, um, and other uh, potential uh, um, yeah positions. I mean, is there do, would you position would do, do would you um, describe yourself as an adherent to a particular uh, uh, spiritual path? Um, I believe that God, Atman, Buddha, sure, is 
unlimited possibility and unlimited thought. If we look at the highest power in that way, mm -hmm. then that would be the definition of the spirituality that I adhere to. That I am unlimited thought and possibility. I am all information available to me. I simply have to ask, remember, and receive. Yep. And that I know that everyone else is also unlimited possibility and thought if they so choose it. Yeah. And that's the spirituality that I live by. That the more love, peace, harmony, and acceptance sure. that I choose to be, well, what, the more unlimited possibility I have in my life to create. What do you think? I mean, um, that's the Church of D. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's great. Uh, I think uh, I like that. Uh, what what's your intuition? Uh, and again, maybe it's this is a bit of a catch twenty two, but. How do you think, uh, you know, what, what's the world going to be like in another 50 or 100 years? Are people going to be... The more... world will be whatever we perceive well, we exactly. want it to that, be. That's why I'm saying it's a, it's a bit of a catch-22, because whatever you believe it's going to be, in a sense, it will be, right? That's what you're, that's what you're saying. Absolutely, and that's why they're talking about the separation of new, newer than older. Mm -hmm. It's all about perception, I believe. So, so is the world... So in a sense, the world is already perfect now, then. Absolutely, if you perceive it that way. Isn't that isn't that the ultimate uh, position to be in? To, is Absolutely, that... if you perceive it that way. Do you perceive it that way? I, I absolutely perceive it that way, and that's why in my world, um, you know, money falls in and. I have more energy and health than a lot of people half my age, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I, I'm passionate about five careers that I'm doing, and I seem to always have enough time to do them all, and, you know, the, the, the happier you choose your perception to be, the happier your life will be. It's a friggin' no-brainer, yeah. but people have to choose to get it, and they want to fight it. They want to hold on to their limitations. They want to hold on to their stories. They want to hold on to the ride of the drama that we're living in. And, you know, there's nothing bad about that. It's just a choice that they're making. But most of them, I believe, are making the choice that they don't really want. Sure, I agree. So if you want your life to be happier and more blissful, Choose to see yourself as a happy, blissful person who sees the world that way. Yeah. So a lot of it is about, right, yeah, it's, it's again, like, as you said, you creating your own reality. That's, that's what it comes down to. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I know there are people that will read this and go, oh, please, you know, this is so naive, this is so Pollyanna, and I'm saying, I don't care. I don't really care what you think, because my life is great, and I want you to ask yourself, how great is yours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, I, I really don't care if people agree with me. I really don't care if, if they think I'm, you know, ha less than halfway. I know it's the truth. Yeah, no, 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 it sounds, uh, it sounds, it sounds great. It sounds great. Um, so what, what, um... As you mentioned, you, you you're juggling a lot of hats at the moment. Um, yeah, where, where where do you see um, D um, in another in another I don't know five ten years? Where where do you where yeah where how where, where, where do you see things um, progressing to? I guess. You know, I just see me creating. Uh, as long as I'm creating, I'm happy. Are you gonna Are you gonna uh, write another book? Oh, I've already got my fourth one almost finished. Great, wow. It's nice. called Getting Stuff. And uh, I have a publisher in line, and it's almost ready to go. I mean, we haven't gotten into the editing process, but 
you know, and I see myself uh, acting if I still want to sure. uh, till the day I drop. And uh, I see myself uh, being a fabulous grandmother to grandkids that I'm sure I'll have. And um, uh, creating just more uh, Is your daughter, does your fun, daughter, where, where, you know, fun and, and, and where, travel. Where, where, and where, where, the where, death where, of my friend was a real wake up to me. And I'm not, I'm not putting anything on hold sure. anymore. Oh, what, did, what did you want to know about my daughter? Oh, sorry. Well, you mentioned that you look forward to being a grandmother uh, uh, one day. What uh, does your daughter live uh, uh, in California as well, or what? Uh... Yeah, she she lives about fifteen minutes from me. She's not married yet. Um, she's just actually finished her first uh, little film, right. so she's starting her career. But I know, you how, know, how, I'm gonna. How, how old is she? She's twenty two. Twenty-two. Well, she's she's got, and, uh, she's got her whole life ahead of her, right? I'm I'm actively creating a project that we can do together. That's wonderful. Um, and but I, I you know, I know she's going to have kids, and I know I'm going to be around a really long time. So I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're looking be forward. Amazing, an amazing grandmother. And by the way, I mean, you also talk about. Again, I didn't mean to say anything uh, bad about Grandma Bo. I, I just didn't remember if, we, you know, you mentioned it was the aunt in the car, but, you know, you mentioned oh, no, what, no. what a positive influence your mother and your grandmother uh, were for you. And, uh, yeah, it's, it sounds like uh, your, 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 uh, you know, your, your, your family's uh, very lucky to, to have such a positive, uh, loving person. Um, yes, uh, indeed. I, I was surrounded by powerful feminine energy. And that includes my father. My father was exceptionally um, intuitive and creative. And interestingly enough, my grandmother and my mother uh, brought in more of the masculine power to create ideas with. So it was kind of a dichotomy because it, it was the opposite. Uh, I mean, I think we have to be aware that sometimes the women, oftentimes the sure. women, sure. bring in the masculine powerful energy, right. and the men now bring in the intuitive divine. And the divine feminine, the way I understand it, is the balanced combination of masculine, feminine, and child. That's the highest definition of the divine feminine. Wait, so the of the divine feminine or just the highest definition overall? Because you because that is the masculine and the feminine together, and the divine and the child. So there there is a masculine exactly. There. Yeah. Okay. So that's creation itself. You creation see. itself. Yep, I see. Which again is a feminine, uh, a feminine thing. Yeah, creation. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, that's great. That's great. Any. Um, anything else? Um, you know, th th this is all, yeah, it's, it's really wonderful. I've got lots of, lots of great, great stuff. Uh, well, you've asked a lot of great, great <laughs> questions, dude. Thank you. Thank I, I think this is probably really one of the most stimulating interviews and in you don't understand what a compliment that is, I'm sure, but I think I've done over 500 this year. Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, it's very kind. you know, it's, it's really nice to do an interview where where somebody has expanded the information with the questions they've asked, you know. So I'm very appreciative that you, well, it's, it's my you took the time to really focus on that. It's my it's my pleasure. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it's great. Any anything else? Uh, well, I guess you know, you, I've got, I've got more more than enough. If, if there's anything else you want to to add, you know, or... just really just the simplest way is to love yourself. If you want to wrap up the whole article in one sentence, it's love yourself. <laughs> the noun and the verb. Well, the you book, know, the everything gives. else will fall into place when we hold the intention of loving ourselves. Love, love is really, yeah. It's a, uh, it is a very, yeah. That's 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 what you got to get down to. Um, and you, you boil it down very well, and you give lots of great examples. I, like I said again, congratulations. I think it's a great book. I think. Uh, I think it's a, a very, very positive book, and I think you should be very, very proud of it. So I am. Thank you.
They really, really should. Uh, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's 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 fantastic, fantastic, cool, D. All right, well, uh, I'll um, I'll definitely uh, send you a copy of the magazine. Uh, do you, do I have an address for you? Maybe let me. Um, I don't know. Let me give it to you. It's okay. two three two three zero three five. Two three zero three five. Yep. Kumora Crest Drive. I'll spell it. C U M O R A H Crest. Drive, Woodland Hills, California, 91364. So that's 23035, Kumora Crest Drive, that's spelled C-U-M-O-R-A-H, Woodland Hills, 91364. Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. All right, well, thank you. All right, darling. Thank you so you much. You have a, lots, lots of, lots fabulous of... rest of your day, okay? Thank you, Will. Yeah, I'm, I'm a night owl. It's uh, it's 11 p.m. here, so I... Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, anyway, I feel very energized by this conversation, and, uh, yeah, and again, uh, I... I I, I hope that uh, yeah. Well, I I know I know I don't hope I know that you've got lots of lots of great things ahead. So thank um, you. I'll stand in that knowing with you. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, well, have a great rest of your night then. You too. Have a great day. Have a great day.